Is it more the childlike excitement to learn? Or does it ever get to a point of, this just got serious? A bit of both. I mean, yeah, sometimes um, you'll hear a talk that will kind of scare you. I mean, especially if it's about the, the, you know, the politics or the financial situation in astronomy or something like that, because we'll have those talks at these meetings as well. There'll be people talking about the NASA budget or the cost overruns of missions. And that could be pretty scary, quite frankly, because our you know, careers and progress is ultimately linked to the funding to these organizations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, other times, something kind of terrifying or uh, thought provoking, you know, you've had Avi on, on the channel mm -hmm. before, Avi Loeb, mm -hmm. and, you know, he's been talking about how Oumuamua, this interstellar asteroid, mm -hmm. or at least we assumed it was an interstellar asteroid, he was saying, well, you know, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's actually an alien spacecraft. And look, the first time you see that, part of you wants to kind of like think, hold on, that's ridiculous. But if you actually think about it a bit longer, you might be kind of terrified by that prospect and think that's actually something that's very disturbing. Let me really think about it. And I think we owe it to people like Avi, as controversial as that idea has been, to give it due process and due thought. And um, when we have these new ideas, they shake things up and they force us to move forward. So yeah, those are actually kind of the most interesting talks. So at this point, I was looking up what percentage of the universe hasn't been explored and, you know, what we don't know about. You'll see yeah. the number 95%. We only know 5%, right? Mm -hmm. And in the ocean, they'll say 94%. We don't know. 6% we know. So those two numbers are relatively around the same thing, right? So if we don't know 95% of it, we only know 5% of it. Yeah, can you zoom in on that? We only know 5% of the universe. Remaining 95% is still a mystery and unknown, unknown universe of new particles and force of waste discovery. Okay, if that's the case, where are you at with, you know, uh, if there's another, you know, uh, living aliens out there, how do you process that? Are you more from the community of saying, no, I don't think there's anything there. I think it's just what people want. They want that to exist because it's exciting. It's exhilarating. Mm. That means all these movies, Alien, E.T. phone home, these things are real. Guys like this exist. Or you're like, no, nah, I hate to kind of be the bearer of bad news. There's really <laughs> nothing like that out there. Well, let's, do you get, let's just uh, say first thing about this, this number, this 5% number or 4% number here. So that's actually talking about the fraction of normal matter in the universe, what we call baryonic matter. So mm -hmm. that's the same kind of thing that's desks made out of, you and me are made out of, protons, neutrons, atoms, electrons, mm -hmm. things like that. But the other 95% is dark matter and dark energy. So that's what it means by that statement. But even that's not true because we don't know about 5% of even all the normal matter, the vast majority of normal matter is so far away from You're us. You're saying even less than 5%. Oh, a minuscule. I mean, what do I know about a star that's on the other side of the Milky Way? Nothing. We haven't, we don't even know about its existence, quite frankly. A star on the other side of the Milky Way is undetectable Got to our it. telescopes. So we know about only really the stars which are in our local neighborhood, maybe about a order of 100 million to a billion of them. There's a, you know, at least 100 billion stars around the Milky Way, and there's 100 billion galaxies outside of the Milky Way, of which we know hardly anything about their microscopic, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of the stars and the planets, that kind of properties. So, you know, I don't know how you put a percentage on that, but we, we know next a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of that number, I'm sure. And then, you know, we're coming back to this, what could be out there you know, in terms of life and, and aliens and this kind of thing. Look, that's, that's the reason I got into astronomy. You know, I was fascinated by that question. And, you, you know, I said, like, I was watching Star Wars, Star Trek, and I would look up at the stars thinking about that question, wondering if there was someone out there who would hopefully fly by in a spaceship and beam me up and let, show me the stars in the universe. That was my dream. So I've always hoped that there was life out there. But as a scientist, my job is to decouple and divorce my wishes and desires away from objective truth. My job as a scientist is to seek objective truth, not what I want to be true, but what is actually true. And that's pretty much the only th game in town which does that <laughs> in terms of you know, a human endeavor that we actively participate in. And so I think that's beautiful, but it does require a lot of conscious effort to, hey, what do I want to be true? If I want that to be true, I should probably be pretty skeptical about any time I see something where I think that. If I see um, a UFO and I really want that to be aliens because it would just be so cool and so interesting if that was true, because I want that to be true as a scientist, I have to be extra skeptical of that, of that possibility. And so that's where your, your skepticism and you know, the skeptical brain of a scientist really kicks in. So I tried to be just agnostic. You know, let's get let's get data, let's get the evidence, and when the evidence becomes compelling, overwhelming, then we'll go for it. But we certainly don't have that evidence at this point. We don't have that evidence at this. So you're saying so 
you don't believe there's uh, aliens out there. You're not, you're not a person I believe. I neither believe nor don't believe. It's just, I want to do the experiment. You want to know or yeah. not know. That's what you want to know. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you, uh, how much research have you done speaking to people who claim they've seen? Have you spoken to others who have? And when you have, what do you ask them? I've spoken to people, not in like my podcast or the channel, but you know, many individuals you meet in sure. life. Like I remember my high school teacher told me that. I went back to my old high school and he told me a story of when he saw a UFO. Um, I've had, yeah, my, like my, my sister and uh, sister's fiance at one point was telling me stories of UFOs he'd seen. So I've had many people, because they're an astronomer, they think maybe I'll be able to debunk this or explain what's going on. But I can't. I mean, you can't take a, a first-hand story like that and explain it. It's just not enough information. I mean, I'm, I don't have any equipment to observe or go back. So, Out of your, your 10,000 peers who are other astrophysicists or astronomers, out of the small community you're part of, what percentage of them are convinced there are UFOs out there? I think I think it's small. I've never done that poll, but I think I think the idea less than ten points. I, well, I, let's put it this way: I think the idea that UFOs are aliens, I think, would be small. I think the idea that there are unidentified things in the atmosphere would probably be quite living, high. Living, mm, I don't I don't think that'd be high. But it depends what you mean. If it's a drone, is a drone living? If it's a Chinese drone, mm, no, do we that's count not that? living. Nope. Yeah. So I think if you're thinking about something that's truly extraterrestrial, I think the fraction is quite small. That people believe that what we are seeing is truly evidence of aliens. In these uncertain times, if there's anything we need is we need people to believe the future looks bright. So you, if you've heard about me saying this mission to you, we're on a mission to get a million people to wear this gear, and this is what we're doing. If you buy one of these hats, there's a category of buying one hat, getting the second one free. If you haven't yet worn this gear publicly, go ahead and test it out, buy some of the gear, wear it in public, and see how many people will stop by and say, you're also, you also watch a value team. You, you also follow PBD Podcast. I do too. Place your order. Go to vtmerch.com. Click on the link above or below. Place your order and represent the VT and the PBD Podcast gear. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.